so hello everyone welcome to our new video if this is your first video that you are watching on our channel or even if you have watched videos on our channel before and if you have not subscribed to our channel then please do subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get a notification whenever we are uploading a new video with amazing new contents every time okay so today we are going to discuss about string taxonomy and it is a very important topic as compared to C language and it is most preferable if you are studying under VTU which stands for Visveswaraya Technological University in Karnataka. So here, what is string taxonomy? This is just a fancy word taxonomy. It is nothing but it is the different types of classification of strings. Okay. It is just about uh, how we are classifying strings depending upon various different terms so here i have noted down all the different type of strings that we can have in c language okay the first one we have the most basic one is character strings which is nothing but it is a array of characters which is representing a string nothing else and it is terminated by a backslash zero so here we have an example care character string i have taken and hello c i have written here so this is nothing but it is a string then we may also call the same thing as null terminated string because at the last what do we have we have a null character over there so which is a backslash under zero so it is the same thing here again and then here we have fixed length strings so now what is a fixed length string a string whose size is already predefined which is not changed during the entire execution like suppose while declaring a string here it is obvious that we have to declare it as a as an character array so here this character array it has a fixed size here as 20 if i look at the previous two examples here they don't have any size given here inside this array inside this square brackets so they are not fixed size but this one is a fixed size a fixed length array here which has a size of 20 characters okay then we have variable length string normally we can create variable length string in this way also but suppose if you want to dynamically create a string in that case we are going to use the malloc function now this malloc function it is taking the size of 30 characters and then it is and as we all know that the malloc function it returns a void pointer so it will be returning the address and here we are going to store it in variable length string and then this inside this variable length string this variable here we are going to store the string here okay and then here we have unicode strings now before that what is unicode uh, simple statement i will say so that you can understand it better that what are unicode unicode is a special encoding system which is used to represent all the characters that we have in all the different languages around the world to represent all those different characters whatever the languages we have here in the world hindi english english it was already there so it is also there in unicode along with that we have english assamese bengali marathi tamil uh, kannada chinese japanese everything every characters are there every characters in all the languages across the world are present there in unicode so here for writing normal characters the normal characters that we have on our regular keyboard the total number of characters is uniform it just needs one byte for representing everything one byte here means total which is equal to eight bits which is equal to total 256 characters different characters but if we have to consider different characters from different languages then in that case the number of characters increases so the size of the character that we are storing there the size also increases from one byte it may it may differ from two three or it may also become four bytes there so for storing those type of values we need here white strings now how do we store white strings or we may also call them as an array of white characters okay so here we have another type in c which is written as w care underscore nt to store white characters there okay so here we have a string variable w care t unicode string now here 
this now what as we as i said that all those characters they are stored as a white character to represent them as a white character a capital l has to be written before them okay so this is how we store a unicode string c itself does not have built in unicode support but we can use white characters and white strings for extended character sets then here we have the l prefix that we write in c and c++ language is used to indicate that a string literal is of type white character okay then next here we have white strings now white strings as I, as i have said just now whenever we have to store some kind of characters whose ascii value is greater than 1 byte so for those cases we use a white string here and then multi byte strings now here multi byte strings to store those unicodes they are also called as multi byte because the size of the byte has increased from 1 byte it may as i said it may be 2 bytes 3 bytes or 4 bytes so they are called as multi byte because multiple bytes are related there so this three we can group them as the same one unicode strings or white strings and multi byte strings depending upon the different mode of classification they are named differently here we have literal strings strings written directly in source code which are directly written in the source code okay then we have empty strings here which does not contains anything they are just only double quotes and empty double quotes to be specific then dynamically allocated strings the same thing which we did here in number 4 variable length strings so the same thing has been classified in a different way here as dynamically allocated strings here dynamically we are creating a string here and in that string we are storing some kind of value here then we have s ascii strings now these are those strings which are using the ascii character set instead of storing the character we are storing the ascii values there so for storing hello this is how we store hello now all these values they are in hexadecimal format h is represented as 48 e is 65 l is 6 c 6 c we have here twice o is represented as 6 f and at last as we know that at the end of the string we have a null character so that null character it has a value as 0 so here we have 0 0 as the value here okay then here we have the hexadecimal strings uh, it is a string where we have alphanumeric characters which are called as hexadecimal okay and then here we have raw strings now what are raw strings now whenever we are storing the path of any file okay or any folder so the path whenever we are moving inside a directory at that junction point we have two we have, sorry not two we have single backslash now whenever we are writing a program a backslash is considered as a escape sequence for null characters for backslash t which is for tab backslash n for new line so backslash x acts as a escape sequence a special type of character there so in the path that might also have a problem suppose if i have a folder which is named as t-shirt which is starting from a t so that backslash t it will be acting as a tab character so it might have a problem there so for all those cases when we don't want any escape sequence characters to work properly so there we need or there we have to consider that as a raw string so in c language it does not directly support the concept of raw strings but we can use double quotes to include escape characters literally okay when we don't want them to happen so whenever we are writing any escape sequence and suppose suppose this is the example we have a file path here so in this case we don't want that backslash to act as a special character a escape character so there in that case we will be using backslash as twice okay so this is it these are some basic classifications of strings how they are classified depending upon uh, different modes of classifications so this is 
all about string taxonomy i hope you all have understood what is string taxonomy and what are the different types or different classifications of strings now if you have liked the video press the like button because that gives us a motivation to record a new video every time and if you have any doubts give us a comment in the comment section we will definitely get back to you subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that whenever we upload a new video you get a notification from our channel so thank you this is it wish you all a merry christmas and keep learning